Golf is the answer. Golf is the way. Take me back to my career, please. <laughs> you know what? It's fucking too... It's fucking, I can't, I can't. Is the B button is the A button and the A button is the B button? Oh, now I gotta see another ad. Greensman or Powerhouse? Time to write your name in the record books. I'll dismiss that, I suppose, using escape. People try to tell me I hate RPGs because I was talking about not liking Remnant. So in fact, people are gaslighting me. They said you got overwhelmed by Divinity 2. First off, Divinity 2 is this, like somewhat complicated game. Secondly, I didn't get overwhelmed by it at all. I enjoyed uh, Divinity 2 a lot. The problem is that the first time I played it was on YouTube and it was just like, you know, we were like, there's no shot we're going to get 900 episodes of this done. Hang on, I gotta take out Bubba Watson. It's just not gonna happen the way that the YouTube doesn't reward that style of content, unfortunately. And then with Team Unity, you know, it was Dan. And Dan will own that too. We were playing Divinity, everybody was having a good time, but Dan's heart wasn't in it, so which made it, I mean, it was a drag for the rest of us to get anything done because everybody has to be there for the quest to get completed. I like Divinity Original Sin too. Hang on, if you just give me a Today's moment here. I have, to, I have to pause the game, but first it has to ping a server. I have to go to assign controller. I've assigned my controller. I'm ready to go. Okay, let me practice. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be covering this week's feature. Incredible. What a pairing. These two, they've been going back and forth at each other. Too fast. Like the budding rivalry here. No kidding, Henny. This player. I forgot that they keep <laughs> talking. <laughs> That's ambitious. Luke, you know when you think that you've got a player on the ropes, maybe they're in the middle of the. Can you move the mouse pointer? No, there is no mouse pointer. Just like there is no spoon. In fact, I can't move the mouse pointer. The only thing that you can move is your mind. Every single time, he's that player. Okay, this would be an incredible birdie. We're gonna lower this down. It's a pitch. Can't wait to see how this rivalry plays out, though. And we're going to land it here. You think you're just getting tired of games? No, not at all. I, I love video games. Even though every time I play video games I like, people say this is a video game for toddlers, and they take a, a big hit off of a lemon pound cake flavored vaporizer cartridge, and then say, I play games for adults, and then sit down and play some Warhammer spreadsheet for like 25 hours and then go jerk off to hentai. Anyway, sorry, I got a lot of trauma like associated with subjecting my, living my entire life in the crucible of anonymous online criticism directed at my intelligence. We're working that out, you know, not you and me, but me and my therapist. Anyway, so I don't think I'm getting tired of video games at all. I think it's just as I've gotten older, I've lost the desire to really pretend to be part of the zeitgeist by like playing every new popular AAA game that's coming out. Because, you know, for a while I was like, that's, I, I'm a gamer. I love games. I've got to see how the new Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon plays. And then I'd play it for like an hour and be like, it seems good if you're a fan of the genre. But then, and then I would never touch it again and I'd go back to like the Binding of Isaac. So I think what, I'm do what I've learned and it's taken me a while is like over time, I've acknowledged like which kind of games are no longer for me. You know, just because you don't vibe with Remnant 2 or even like Baldur's Gate, that doesn't mean you don't like games. Play play some Wilmot's Warehouse or something like that. Play PGA Tour. You can still and and just you know remove yourself as part of the gaming community. That's the secret. If you, and I'm still working on it myself, but if you can do that and still just play video games like the way my parents do where like once a year they'll be like I want to play a golf video game and then they'll get um, like an eight-year-old Tiger Woods game and play it for an hour and be like that was a lot of fun that's the secret man but then you complain there's nothing to play I don't really complain there's nothing to play Remember, I'm on my non-neurotypical arc. I could play Super Auto Pets for my entire streaming work. We can have a great time. The only thing is I take psychic damage when I do it because of the fact that chat's like, sap again, I'm going to leave. And then they type people leave, which makes me think that my career's ending. But then they stay. So it's like a, just a gaslight nonstop. Really, the reason I add in variety is not for me. It's for you. 
Because your brains are so normal that you need to constantly have like new thing. Whereas I'm like, oh my God, ham sandwich for lunch again? This is the greatest day of my life. Oh. Right by the hole. Putting for a par here. Putting for par. We appreciate it. Some of you do. Cracker Jacks doesn't. Cracker Jacks, red name. Viewing without video. And now to bubble water. Flair. It's been neck red name, neck. Cracker Jacks. Really Spelled with a K. Underscore at the end. <laughs> Noted. Also, like... There's a banter new game continuum. You play new game, people are always like, I'm so excited for you to play Baldur's Gate 3. But I've been there before. I'm, I think if I had the time, I would play Baldur's Gate 3. Like my, if I was 17 and it was summer vacation, I would play and finish Baldur's Gate 3. And for life, it would probably be one of my favorite games of all time. Right now, though, the idea of playing it for chat makes me want to die. Just because I know, A analytics will be bad and then be like right now we're having a conversation there's some witty repartee you know there's some banter there's some jabs there's people are taking offense people are leaving people are coming back and saying i just left dan stream etc etc but as soon as we start playing uh baldur's gate 3 every comment is going to be like first off there's going to be 27 minutes between each chat message and every chat message is going to be from like the same dude and his name is going to be like theon Greyjoy of the north or something like that and it's going to say actually your breastplate scales with your strength stat um your strength stat is really good but you need to have a crushing weapon instead of a sharp weapon for fighting enemies that are made exclusively of bones you're still specced with a sword um which you were using which was good because you were fighting like enemies that bled but skeletons don't bleed so you should switch to your mace right now and then i'd be like anybody else anybody else anybody else Anybody, anybody eat at a ghost kitchen recently? Anybody got any thoughts on ghost kitchens or something? So in the same way, and I don't mean, this is just the human condition, I think. In the same way that you complain about me playing new stuff, and you're like, no, you just, seriously, if you just gave Prey a chance, it would really pop off. And I'm like, I don't think it would. I have the exact same thing, but in, inverted for chat, where my experience tells me that sometimes chat does know what they want to see, but most of the time, they don't know what they want to see. They think they want to see Baldur's Gate 3, but then like two hours into Baldur's Gate 3, they're like, I'm going to go leave to watch a streamer um, like drink their own piss or something like that. I'm not willing to drink my own piss. But if you made me... And that will put them ahead of their rival choose between doing a full campaign of, drink, of Baldur's Gate 3 or drinking my own piss, I would have to think about it. Drinking my own piss once? How long would I be sick for? Probably not too long. <laughs> Probably like a couple hours, maybe. Probably not at all. It's true, I'm very well hydrated. Going with the six iron here. My piss is probably just, it's pretty close to just being like sparkling water at this point. Oh! Okay, that's, they sincerely tried to curse me. Hey, look at me. Lovely Momo, hello! Chibli and lovely Momo, welcome to the stream. This guy does not uh, leave me alone. <laughs> All he sits there for like 15 minutes, then he comes right here and just spins in a circle until I pet him. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. Chat, chat like Tomo there, like he's right on the screen. So they do, they love it. He knows like where the camera is. Olivia Munn, Tomo, Chibli, lovely Momo, lovely. Tomo, he is lovely, folks. He is, we love him. We love our Tomos. We love our Rukas. We don't know where he is, but we love him too. And Olivia Munn and Rip and Ripley. Oh, that's a sweet-looking swing, that one. 
Why is his name Pro Golfer? They say, um, dress for the job you want. Stop talking about Bubba Watson, bro. You're, you're creeping everybody out. You're scaring the host. La wrong generation? Persimmon Woods. A lot of golf balls and and blades, and I think that he would be an even bigger impact on the game than he currently is, if that's even possible. I watch what he does. I'm in with trouble. Modern equipment, and it's mind blowing. What is this guy talking about? He he has a lot of stories. He used to play on the pro tour. In many ways, he's the Brian Kibler of PGA Tour 2K23. And just try and hit these big sweeping hooks and fades and every. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he can do with the golf ball. I think it's a little insulting that I um. I mean, I'm minus one. It's not amazing, but it's like pretty good. But then like. While I'm putting, all this dude can talk about is Bubba Watson, who's two strokes back of me. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a decent job today. Chibli, Brian Kibler, Olivia Munn, everybody's here. Everybody's here today. Chibli and Brian Kibler. Lovely Momo, Ripley, Ridley. Don't try and go out and try and hit too many heroic shots or go after too many flag sticks because if you don't Beautiful. Know Look at this. what the consequences are if you don't pull off that shot, well, shame on you. It, this bit so gets worse every time. Obviously have it could be a lot. It's it, it still got a lot of room to go. I could do the bit while playing Baldur's Gate 3. Some dark elf is trying to explain to me how the winds of Nymeria have blown and caused corruption to rise within the lands of Gibbleglox. And I'm the whole thing. He's missing the lore. Chibli, Chibli, Galadriel. Chibli, lovely Momo and Galadriel. Everybody's here today. Coldilocks, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. It takes place in Baldur's Gate. We're not even playing it. We're already getting one guide. Ooh. <laughs> and now to Bubba Watson. I don't give now, two shakes of a lamb's tail about Bubba Watson. His rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? He's crazy, though. He's, a, he's the chip master. Me, when I'm watching the Avengers golf and Bubba Watson's music starts playing. Holy shit, that's Bubba Watson's music. That was not a good stroke. Bubba Watson's going to pass me. Avengers golf game would kind of go hard. I'm a big believer they should make more golf games and less shooters. Oh, you piece of crap, dude. There we go. What percentage of AAA releases have you shoot a gun? Because, like, there, there's definitely some that have you swing a sword instead. But I think that, like, the ratio of swords to guns is crazy. Like, I think we're, maybe it was at a different, it was a peak in, like, 2013 or something like that, but we're getting way less swords and way more guns these days than we did when I was eight anyway, which is my, you know, foundation for a thing being good or bad. For Honor was pretty good. Yeah, it was, like, seven years ago, though, or something. And choosing the eight iron here. Kissing me windy. That's the problem with that one. They're kissing me windy. And here we are with the third shot. Four strokes off the lead. Four honor, yikes. Four honor dies of cringe. So you don't actually... Maybe you guys don't like games. Because every game that I play, with a couple of exceptions, but most games that I play, I play them for an hour and I say, I had fun with that. That was pretty good. Every time I bring up a game to chat, four honor. Ugh. 
I played 100 hours of it. I hate it every second. Oh, why do you hate games, by the way? Oh. Hey, Tungleberry, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. No, I just hate AAA. Uh, do I have Drake in this chat? Not the person, but the, and not the dragon either, but the oh, emote? I think I kind of agree. Tungleberry, thank you again. Thank you. And also, there's a couple AAA developers I give a pass to. From software, until they make a bad one, that's a, that's a pack one, pick one, no matter what. I, don't, I, don't, I can't stand to see Bubba Watson get another chip in. Yeah, the secret to playing good games is literally... You always have to be careful being complimentary. You never know who's watching. The secret to playing good games is not like wait for games to get good reviews from the games media. You simply wait to see um, what games Retromation or Splattercat play that their audience actually likes. And then you yoink it and play it yourself a lot. <laughs> and then you give credit where credit is due. You don't go, hey, I found this game when I was just browsing through Steam. You say, hey, I have a large viewer overlap with these people and they gave me the back channel tip that, that this game is good. My frames! <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. I got screwed, man. This puck about 11 feet in distance. Go on, get in the hole. I'm losing it. Didn't quite judge the speed on that one. Putting for bogey. There's some Pog games in the new releases on Steam today. Donnie, Donnie Darko meme. Are they Pog games or are they 6 out of 10 Vampire Survivors clones again? The latter? Okay, that's still pretty Pog. I love that Donald Darko meme. Yeah, forget uh, Barbieheimer. Hey, condom for a normal guy. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Forget Barbieheimer. The newest media event of the season is Donald Darko, where you watch Donnie Darko and then play Kingdom Hearts back-to-back -back with Donald Duck as the most powerful wizard in all of Heartlandia. Saw Patrol? Going with the five wood. I don't think people are actually going to pay money to see the Paw Patrol movie in theaters, but I kind of hope it happens because I want to see a bunch of like 22-year-olds complain about two-year-olds ruining their screening of Paw Patrol. <laughs> Does anybody else think that decorum in theaters has really fallen a lot these days? I went to see the Paw Patrol movie in theaters and there were a bunch of parents with their kids in there and their kids were going crazy, man. I went to see this sacred religious film, A Quiet Place in Theaters, and people had the audacity to be eating popcorn that was sold in the concession stand of the movie theater during a movie where audio is of the utmost importance. Does anybody else think you should be able to murder anybody else in a movie theater for an imper for a imperceptible social slight that only I noticed? Crunch time. We're through nine holes here today of cut day. What do you think's in this player's future? Look, they're just above the cut line at the moment. I gotta say, what a pressure situation Okay, there. it's a high pressure situation. This is when I do my best. Whatsoever. Oh, you couldn't paint a better picture. Gorgeous. I'm also here to tell you, I mean, like, I don't think, again, I don't think people are going to go see Saw 10 at the movie theater, for one. Not many people, at least. It'll probably be the biggest movie on his opening weekend, but maybe that's it. But nobody that's an adult without kids is going to see the Paw Patrol movie. But also, take it from me, you got to stop chasing the, the Barbieheimer high, Okay. Two original films 
with names that kind of fit together, both being critical and commercial darlings coming out on exactly the same day. Like that's something that you, you can't create that with artifice. You have to wait for that to happen naturally. It may never happen again in your lifetime. Don't try to force it with Saw and, and Paw Patrol. Mostly because I don't want Paw Patrol to get sold out. That might be the first movie I take my kid to see. In theaters. Ooh. That's okay. Well, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Oh, these are good for the momentum. These ones right on eight feet. That's inside the range. I need to make the cut today. Stepping up the standings after that effort. You're not waiting till Toy Story 5? We have a par four on this one. No, because there's like actual artists involved in the creation of that movie and they're on strike right now. So that one might be delayed a little bit. Paw Patrol, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure the movie's written by like Chat GPT3, so <laughs> it should be okay. Looks like they put a good swing on that. Guy who on That's dates keeps short. trying to impress his date by telling him that he stopped watching movies until the SAG after strike is over. <laughs> Sorry, we're <laughs> getting too, too real for Twitch. <laughs> So do you like any movies? Yeah, I love movies. Unfortunately, I had to stop watching them recently because of the sag after a strike. Just to sh I don't want to be a scab, you know? This one is heading towards the nasty stuff. That's not that nasty, brother. Found the green side rough. Careful, he's a hero. The Arrow actor said that striking was stupid. That's probably because Arrow films in Vancouver, and when he's not filming, he has to live in Ohio. So, honestly, I'm not saying you can't blame him. You can still blame him, but I can understand where he's coming from. Oh, that we almost bubbled it! Arrow probably makes about the same amount of money whether there's a strike or not. I know I've done this bit before, but like, it's not a bit, it's my life. It really pisses me off when I'm taking my baby out for a nap in her stroller, and then I have to like deviate from my usual route because they're filming something that nobody's ever going to watch. No disrespect, okay? Taking my baby out for a nice walk. Hey, well, they're filming something here. What is it? Is it Deadpool 3? Are they filming Deadpool 3 here? I'll take a 10-minute detour for Deadpool 3. Nah, brother. It's family law. They're filming an outdoor scene in family law where Taya Leone drinks a cup of coffee while looking out to the mountains. You know what's bullshit? <laughs> I have, I don't have the cojones to do this, by the way. <clears throat> Looks to be going with the five iron. Hang on, this is a hole in one. Well, but I, so many down. times in Vancouver, you'll walk by like a, a film set that has the crafts, craft services table. I always thought like if I just walked up and said, give me that bag of baked lays, they wouldn't know, right? They would just give me the bag of baked lays. This is, they're not even showing us his shot anymore. They're just showing us his face. You're kidding me. Did he hold that? Tough bunker shot. No bother whatsoever for this player. They find the bottom of the cup. He's so tanked. <laughs> they find the bottom of the cup. Jokic for two. Oh my god. What's your opinion on kettle cooked chips? Here's the thing, anyone else? I would assume that they meant kettle cooked chips. But origin is very specific in their verbiage. So I've never I've never heard of a kettle cooked ship personally. Shipley. <laughs> Dude, I think we can make it over the, the gap here. No, I messed up. It's a typo. Okay. Apology accepted. Um, I do like kettle cooked chips. 
For example, in Canada and also parts of the United States and also Norway, they have Miss Vicky's. Goaded chip. However, as I've, I know I've said it before, librarian, I don't know if you're here, here's one for the, um, the Kettle Cook Chips compilation. Hang on, I gotta take a look at my, at my lie. Give me, give me this right here. I think that Miss Vicky's is very good. I think that the Kettle Cooked, the brand called Kettle, I think they're overrated. I, when they started popping off here in like the early 2010s, I would get them now and then. And I would always be like, when I was eating them, I would get attracted by the artisan flavors. Pepperoncini, uh, honey Dijon, stuff like that. They're, oh, there's not just salt and vinegar. It's sea salt. That salt came from the ocean. And then after like, you know, a normal adult man serving, AKA 80% of an entire family size bag, I would be like, I think these are a little too greasy. But Miss Vicky's, they got like, I don't know if it's a little less oily or something, but they just, they hold up better for like, uh, you know, eating your feelings away. I'm a noted Miss Vicky's enjoyer. But I also feel like... I like the crunch of a kettle cooked. But I also like the crisp of a normal potato chip. If I'm buying potato chips from the grocery store, it's basically 50-50 whether I'm, I'm going crispy or crunchy. But I like them both. Just make the cut, man. I must have had a shit bag of Miss Vicky's. I feel like Miss Vicky's are, if, if you were to poll Canadians on beloved brands, Miss Vicky's would end up in the upper quintile. I think they would, they're in the top 25% most beloved brands within Canada. They might even be a lot higher, I don't know. But like, what did you, because original, it's, it's not a chip where you buy originals. You get the, the original flavor of Miss Vicky's is sea salt and malt vinegar, turquoise bag. The number two flavor, jalapeno, light green bag. I tried jalapeno, was not a fan. Okay, you're insane. You should go to the mental hospital. <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're wrong, and I'm threatened by the difference between your opinion and mine. You're crazy. You've lost it. Opting for the hybrid, I think. The spicy dill pickle go hard? They do. I had some this very week. They do indeed go hard. Slim chance here for birdie, but you never know. Slim chance, watch this. Call that a slim chance. Oh! <laughs> okay, Henny. What's he looking at with this putt? All right, down the hill here. Got to be gentle. Oh, thank God. And now to, but to Bubba Watson. Now to Bubba Watson. Bogey on that last one. Bubba no, Watson for man, birdie. A chance to save their par. The dude literally will not. Okay, never mind. He missed the chip. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. It's also an excellent sandwich chip. Canada's Brooke Henderson currently on I am, top I'm very pro sandwich chips, and I, I couldn't agree more, quite frankly. It's remarkable how your rival is always, like, within one to two strokes of you. We love our Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky's, Miss Chipley's, Chibley, and Miss Vicky, the chip, the matriarch of the chip family. The impact that Brooke Henderson has had on the game seems to have been even more significant. I think Miss Vicky's is is well respected within for, Canada. Uh, women's golf in Canada. She carries the mantle for Canadian golf in general. Excuse me? She's such an amazing Are they talking about me? Young lady to be around. Her personality is, is Billy me or Billy him? She's just a good Your name's Billy too? No, that's why I'm so freaking confused. Two time major winner. But what I'm impressed about most with her game, Luke, is the fact that, you know, she is such a long hitter in the game. You don't quite see too many women in the game right now that Careful. don't talk about hitting it long like we do in the men's game. But make no bones about it. She hits it a long way out. The long the way. Over some of the other players. And that's why she is such a prolific winner on the LPGA. Trying to get to even par with this putt. For Eagle. No, Bubba. 
Bubba, you're going to make me lose my sponsorship. <laughs> Let's take a look at the current standings. Oh, Canada. Brooke Henderson leads this tournament. Par threes always offer up that... Can I say something about Toy Story that might be nice controversial? A lot of people my age would say the worst thing about Toy Story 4 is the fact that it exists. Once you have kids, your opinion will change. Worst, worst part about Toy Story 4 is when Keanu Reeves says, Yes, I, Canada. That part always makes me cringe. Because it's, it's pandering to the Canadian audience. It's already pandering by hiring Keanu Reeves in the first place. It's my greatest shot of all time. Please don't squander it. And racking up their fifth thirty of the day. I like it. Two in a row. He's feeling it. So after that hole, he's now up to even with the card. Gotta like it. Moving up the leaderboard. Never a bad thing. I have not seen three or four. Well, listen. My personal opinion. That dog will hunt. If you think at some point in your life you will have kids, oh, this one's going to get me in trouble. Whatever you like to watch is fine. <laughs> Period. Next sentence. If you have, if you are, if you think one day, you will have kids if that's something you desire for your life. Knowing that you have a limited amount of free time, I don't think you should endeavor to watch children's movies as a childless adult unless you're interested in them. If you watch a trailer for a new movie that's for kids and you say, that looks fun, go see it. But if you're like, I have to keep up with all the Pixar movies that have released, even though I don't necessarily feel like I want to, don't worry. If anyone's going to say you have to see Toy Story 3, listen, if you're 28, you haven't seen Toy Story 3 yet, and you expect one day you're going to have kids, don't watch Toy Story 3, because odds are you're probably going to watch it 25 times when your kid is between the age of like 0 and 12, okay? Watch some... Yodorovsky movies or something like that. Watch Holy Mountain. Watch uh, Nymphomania or something like that. A Serbian film. Watch some stuff that you cannot watch when your child is in the room or something like that. American Pie, American Pie 2, so true. All the sex comedies. Euro Trip. Human Centipede. What a shot. For par? Really? That should have been for a birdie, in my opinion. That shot deserved a birdie. Do not watch a Serbian film? Why? Sorry, I like world cinema. I'll watch a movie from anywhere. Wow, what a save. Needed it. Needed that in a big way. Chipping in. People will really be like. I'll watch a movie from anywhere. I'm not afraid of subtitles. And then their top 10 favorite films on Letterboxd are Parasite in the number three position. Three Spider-Man movies. Sorry. I'm gonna... <laughs> I like this finishing goal because it gives you options. You don't have to necessarily hit driver here. If you do, you got to take it over some... Three Spider-Man movies. A, a Fellini film that they didn't even like that much. They they just put it on out of necessity while also like browsing social media on their phone. And then at the end of it, they said, "Wow." Ooh, good time. Yeah, exactly. I have exotic taste. Really, is it exotic taste or is it just Wong Kar Wong Kar Wai's in the mood for love again? It's Juan Carmai's Juan Carmai's in the mood for love again. What about Porky's? That's a pretty good one. That's one of those '80s movies with all the sex crimes, though, right? You know, I was because <laughs> I'm a millennial and cringe. I was reading Reddit, and there was like people always talk about movies that have not aged well. What's a movie that's actually aged like the worst? Everyone brings up Revenge of the Nerds, which is crazy. At the end of the movie, one of the nerds puts on a Darth Vader costume and tricks another a jock's girlfriend into sleeping with him, and then they like sell nude pictures of uh, a lady 
against her will on the bottom of pie plates at like the fundraiser. But it's like a great story for the nerds because they got one over the jocks. Like it's, it's, that's insanity. But then someone also brought up how in American Pie 1, Nadia gets filmed while changing on a webcam and then the video gets distributed and she gets in trouble. Like she gets reprimanded by her host family because her, she didn't even do anything, man. All she did was change. She just changed her damn clothes. They were going to deport her. Oh, a lovely opportunity to save Pa here. What is this stroke, dude? Never mind. I'm cracked. Never mind. I'm mad. That's a great attempt from long range. So close. She touched herself? All right. Well, in that case, she probably deserved to be punished, but... <laughs> I'm joking! Jason! Oh, so she can't... Shannon Elizabeth can't touch herself, but Jason Biggs can fuck a dessert? Make it make sense. Hang on. I made it to... I made it through the cut somehow. Despite being plus one, and I got a driver swing path head eight of one hundred.